Property of Fairport Central School District. I don't know what kind of savage students you guys have. Why are these things so filthy? More so, which one of your students dug the ThinkPad logo out of the palm rest of this thing? What is going on at Fairport School? These crunchy old business laptops from 2010 are known as ThinkPad X201s. They've got 12 inch screens, classic clunky keyboards, and first gen Intel Core i5 processors. I found these two listed as a lot on eBay, and honestly, that engraving sold me. Property of Fairport Central School District. Like, I've seen asset tags and stickers and things. They really cut that right into the laptop lid. These things are unique. They're also missing a lot of parts. This one has no RAM cover and no hard drive cover, and they're both missing batteries. The plan is simple though. I'm gonna put some drives in here, find out if these things work, and we'll get them cleaned up and see what these things are still capable of 15 years after their launch. Slight roadblock here. These things have BIOS passwords on them, which is a bit of a problem because they're set up to network boot, and I can't change those settings without getting past the password. I'm hoping there's a way around this. I'm going to do some research. Well, I found a YouTube video that says if I short some specific pins on the BIOS chip, it will bypass the password. It seems kind of sketchy, but I guess I just have to give it a try at this point. I actually found a different guide with better pictures and I should be able to do it just underneath this expansion card bay. I'm gonna take this out and we'll see if I can find those pins. You can barely even make out that these pins exist, but this one here and this one need to connect to each other. Wow, you, you really just cannot see that. I'll put a link to this guide in the description because it kind of points it out better. Okay, I found the pins and I'm just reading this guide here. You need to short SDA and SCL, so it seems like an I squared C line. The correct moment differs between devices. Often you will need to short after powering on and before display initialization. If shorted too early, the machine will not boot, and if shorted too late, it won't work. This seems like kind of a nightmare. Uh, let's see if I can do it, I guess. This actually took so long to do, but I did figure it out. First, you have to press the power button and then the F1 key to enter setup. At this point, start shorting the pins and hold them the entire time you go through the settings menu. Only release the short after you actually get the password reset thing to show up on the screen. Oh, I totally got it. New supervisor password. After that, I was able to change whatever bio settings I wanted. And by the way, doing this to the other computer took just as long and just as many attempts. With that being done though, I can grab some drives to put in these things and try and get windows loaded. I have, I have literally never seen this happen before. Failure to display security and shutdown options. That was interesting. Let's put a drive in the other computer. Take that off. Pull the cover off. Whoa. Wait, what? why is there a drive in this? It was sold as not having drives. That's an SSD. Well, this just got a lot more interesting. These computers were sold as not having any drives in them, which I guess means the seller didn't know this was still in there. There's probably still data on this. I'm just gonna put it back in the computer and see what happens. What is this? Is this a Chromebook OS? What is this? Do I sign into my Google account on the sketchy ThinkPad eBay Chromebook? What? Um, can we skip this? No, we have to sign in. That's the only option. I probably should have expected this. They're locked down to specific school accounts and I'm not authorized to use the device. I really wanted to find something interesting on here. I even brought out my Linux laptop to like go through the file system. Unfortunately, it looks like everything's just stored in one 20 gigabyte file called encrypted.block. I don't know if that's like a Chrome OS thing. I've never used a Chromebook, but yeah, I don't think I'm getting anything off of this. Let's just see what these things can do with Windows or whatever. Not very much, it would turn out. I tried to run Cinebench on one of them and it was significantly overheating, running at 99 degrees. 
I ended up taking apart starting with the keyboard, then the screen and the motherboard until I could get down to the cooling system to change out the thermal paste. Then I put it all back together and tried to get it cleaned up a bit. I took off some of the random tape and stickers and generally just wiped them down. I more or less did the same to the other one and now they both complete Cinebench R15 runs without overheating. They scored around 180 points, which is pretty low considering a more modern 11th gen ThinkPad would easily get over 800. These numbers translate to the computers feeling pretty sluggish, even with light stuff like web browsing. Pages take quite long to load on these old machines, making them not really that useful. Web apps like Google Docs also take forever to load, but once they're loaded, they mostly just work fine. To put this experience into numbers, Browser Bench Speedometer ran about three times faster on the more modern ThinkPad compared to the X201. And you really do feel that difference using both of these computers. Linux was able to improve things slightly over Windows. I tested YouTube at 1080p and it seemed to manage that just fine. Almost no games are a good experience on here. Not even BTD6 could manage to stay above 30 FPS. Most stuff doesn't launch, and the stuff that does looks like this. Overall, these 15-year-old laptops perform kinda like they're 15 years old. Who would have guessed? And yeah, I know the 11th gen E15 is not really a fair comparison, but if you're looking in the price range of these things with the classic keyboard and the small form factor, you can probably find an X220 instead. This feels quite a bit better. It's a generation newer processor and like I run Google Docs on here on Linux all the time and it works fine. All that being said, these are still pretty cool computers that I wanna be able to use. So I'm gonna find out if I can maybe 3D print some of the missing covers and then I think these things will be done and usable again. Okay, yeah, I made these in the wrong colors and they don't really fit that great, but honestly, that just adds to the vibe of these things. I think they're perfect. And with that, I think I now have the perfect computers to take to a coffee shop and look like I'm a crazy person trying to steal your passwords. Okay, hear me out, hear me out. Proxmox cluster computer. If I figure that out, I'll make a video about it. So get subscribed and I'll see you next Thursday.